You know quite a few French words already, but you feel like when it comes to understanding French people speaking, it's a whole other issue. It's probably because you do not know French slang yet. And that can quickly become extremely frustrating. No worries, I get it. After this video, it won't be an issue anymore. Bonjour tout le monde, I'm Cassie, your French tutor, so you can learn French the French way. Today we're gonna tackle a, I think, very exciting topic and one that is never taught in textbooks or in schools. Any language, really any, has its own slang or spoken codes and French is no exception. But you know what? It is rich, it is fun and it is crucial in your French learning journey. So, if you want to understand French people when they speak like that... Je te jure, il est trop chelou. Il a essayé de me pécho l'autre jour, mais genre relou. I advise you stay until the end. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you really are serious in learning French. Alors, t'es prêt? On y va. We're gonna start with spoken French, really how people speak. I'm not talking about the words, but the way how they do it. And there are three or even four things that I want to mention today. So first, and keep in mind that it always depends on the region, but where I'm from, so around Paris, we tend to kind of eat away the vowels. So for example, je suis will become je suis. Je sais will become je sais. Tu as will become ta. So we tend to go quite fast. I think you understand the logic. Now, when it comes to negation, usually to say something in negative form, you will take the verb, for example, j'ai, I have, and you will put ne in front of the verb and pas after the verb. We don't really need both because just pas is already a negative adverb. So we know it's a negation. The ne is quite redundant. We don't need it. And that's why when we speak, we don't use it. Je n'ai pas will become j'ai pas. Je ne veux pas will become je veux pas. And if you remember my first point, je veux pas. We eat away with the vowel again. So it is not technically grammatically correct, but all French people do that. Although it is when we speak and not when we write. For example, for an email, we won't speak like that. We will use ne pas. Otherwise, it is a little bit too casual. And something that pleases my students a lot, I swear, is the future. So I know that you're gonna learn that we have two futures in French. Le futur simple, le futur proche. So if you learn future already, you know that, let's take avoir, because we already use that verb. Avoir in future tense would be j'aurai. But the future proche is way more simple and it works with old verbs. You just need to learn aller, je vais, in present tense. You keep the present tense, really. And then you add the infinitive verb that you actually want to express. So again, with avoir, that would be je vais avoir. And that is future proche. So proche means close. Technically, it is for a moment in the future that is still close to us. But because it is so simple, French people, we tend to use it a lot. Even in a year or two, je vais aller. Je vais aller en vacances. Je vais voyager. Je vais visiter la France. Whatever. So it really doesn't matter anymore in French. Spoken French, that's the topic of the video, you know. In spoken French, it doesn't matter anymore when it is in time. Je vais and whatever your verb is. And I already have a bonus for you. <laughs> oui becomes oui, non becomes non. And I say it all the time. I'm pretty sure that 80% of the time when I speak, I say oui instead of oui. I say non instead of non. So you want to sound French? If there is one thing you need to remember is that one. Attends, je vais pas y aller comme ça. Je te jure, je suis pas sûre. Hein.
Now that we've seen how French people speak, and again, I'm talking about the way, we're gonna focus on the words they use. So a bit of slang, of course, because I know that's what you're here for. But we're gonna go for very common slang first, and then we'll see more specifically from young people and more in popular areas. So common slang from everybody in France. We're gonna start with avoir la dalle. Avoir la dalle. That means to be hungry. That would be the same as j'ai faim. J'ai la dalle. J'ai trop la dalle. J'ai vraiment trop envie de manger. Être crevé ou être claqué. That would be like être fatigué. Je suis crevé. J'ai trop travaillé. Works the same with claqué. Je suis claqué. J'ai trop travaillé. Move to mito. Mito full mito man, but we always shorten it, is a liar. So if you just say mito, that means you know the person is lying. You can also use it in a sentence. Tu racontes n'importe quoi. T'es trop un mito. Can also be used as a verb. Ne me mito pas. Well, because we saw earlier that we skipped the ne, that would be me mito pas. I know that you're lying. Me mito pas. Don't lie to me. And now we have three words for one idea that is the work. We have le boulot, le taf, and the verb bosser. Bosser means to work. Le boulot ou le taf is the work. Though taffé is also a verb, a little bit less common than bosser. So if we take our former example, je suis claqué, j'ai trop bossé. Je suis crevé, j'ai trop de taf. Taf, Again, because we skip a few vowels. See? It's all connected. Again. Okay, you're tired. You have worked too much. You're probably hungry. Tu as faim. Tu as la dalle. See? Again, connected. <laughs> like I wrote a script. <laughs> what? Anyway. Et tu veux bouffer. Bouffer will be like manger. So it is slang. Very common. So not rude at all. Not that elegant though. J'ai envie de bouffer. J'ai faim. J'ai la dalle. We're not talking about food or work or whatever. We're gonna talk about clothes. Les fringues. In normal, casual French, that would be les vêtements. But we tend to say les fringues. Tous mes fringues sont sales. Okay, what do I have behind me? Except this cute little lady here. Yeah. I have books. And books in French, you probably know it is livre. But in slang, we say bouquin. J'ai lu un super bouquin. And what you don't see is that here I have bouquin. But here, trust me, it is a mess. But you cannot see it, of course. A mess, we say le bordel. For example, you're stuck in traffic jam because it was a mess on the road. C'était le bordel sur la route. I kind of like this one. Le bordel. We also say le dawa, where I'm from. The region really around Paris. Uh, but that comes from Arabic and it... Arabic or other countries in, in Africa? But it's not common to everyone. Anyway, le bordel. That would be better for you to learn this one. Okay, and last one, because it is extremely common and really from all kind of generations that would be how to say un homme, a man and a woman, une femme, un mec, une meuf. J'ai vu un mec et une meuf porter les mêmes fringues. For example. Oh, je suis claquée. J'ai qu'une envie, c'est de bouffer. Sérieux, j'ai la dalle et je suis crevée avec tout le taf que j'ai en ce moment. Je fais que bosser. In the previous part, I told you about very common slang French, but now we're gonna focus on more popular areas, so actually where I grew up. So this kind of vocabulary, I used it as a teen, still use it now. Um, it shows my background, not gonna lie, 
But yeah, I find it cool. I want to share it with you. It's also extremely rich because it shows the diversity of the population and I personally love it. So again, I want to share it with you. We're going to start with le seum. J'ai le seum. It expresses your frustration. Like you're angry, you're frustrated, you're irritated. Tu as le seum. J'ai tellement le seum. Le seum, that comes from the Arabic word seum, which means venom. Then we have she. 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 For those who saw my video about French gestures, you know this one already. She. It can also be bien fait. So it means in a very negative way, you deserve it. So I don't know, you did something bad and then you pay the consequences. Somebody else can say she. Bien fait. A word that I never used, otherwise my mom would have killed me. It is la daronne. To talk about the mother, le daron for the father. I honestly do not know where it comes from, but yeah, that's how people say it. Le daron, la daronne. For example, j'ai rendu visite à mes darons. So if you use the plural, that makes it the parents. J'ai rendu visite à mes darons. I visited my parents. One that is quite popular, uh, even like among the entire population, Though I don't hear it everywhere, it is kiffer. Everybody knows what that means, not everybody uses it. Kiffer, that means to love. It is the same as aimer. J'ai kiffé ce film. And because it is a verb that ends with er, we conjugate it the exact same way. C'est la dèche. La dèche. It means there is nothing left. J'ai plus rien à manger. C'est la dèche. Okay, one that came a bit after um, my teenage years, you know, with my very old age. <laughs> it is la go, to talk about a woman, or la gadji, le gadjo, to talk about a woman or a man. Go, I think it comes from Africa, but I do not know where, so I won't be more specific. Gadji Gadjo, that comes from Romanian languages. Je suis allée en vacances avec mon Gadjo. I went on holidays with my boyfriend because I used the possessive. So, mon Gadjo. My man. My boyfriend. But you can say it for a woman. Ma Gadji. A bit like la dèche, it is la hesse. And again, see, as I told you, with these words, because they are not French per se or they don't follow the same rules, you do pronounce that H. C'est la hesse. C'est le bordel, a bit, kind of the same. It means you're in a pretty bad situation. Je me suis fait virer de mon travail, c'est la hesse. Last one that I kind of like, la chouma. I think it is also la chouma, but where, where I grew up, we didn't really pronounce the h, but I think it is la chouma. So it is la honte. Il s'est tapé la chouma. So he did something embarrassing and was ashamed out of it. J'ai le seum, je te jure. Je me suis tapé la chouma devant ma go et sa daronne. C'est la hesse au taf. Et je kiffe vraiment pas, mais je peux pas partir comme ça. Je suis dans la dèche. Ok, so you, if you've never heard of this concept, I'm pretty sure you're gonna like it. Or get super overwhelmed and stop learning French altogether. I hope you won't because it's not that hard, I swear. So it is what we call le verlan. It is slang that use normal words, but we just kind of reverse the word. So you take the last syllable, put it at the beginning of the word, and that makes another word. And actually, verlan is in itself le verlan de l'envers. Means backwards. So I'm gonna take a very easy example. Merci, merci becomes simer. And we have plenty of words like that. So one, to talk about somebody weird or something, weird, not only people, can be used for both, things and people, it is chelou. So it is le verlan de louche. Louche is like suspicious, but the meaning kind of evolved. Ah, c'est chelou. Le goût est chelou. The taste is weird. Ouf, c'est un truc de ouf. 
C'est ouf It is de Verlan de fou It is crazy But you can also talk about people like that. Il est ouf He's crazy Next we have Pécho, which is the Verlan of Chopé. Chopé is in itself slang for attraper, to catch. But Pécho, when we use it like that, doesn't really mean attraper things. It means attraper people. It is like you seduce someone. J'ai pécho quelqu'un en soirée. Like I seduce someone. You know, seduce in a less romantic or elegant way. And if you want to tell someone to look in a direction, you will say Tema. Tema. Tema le gadjo. <laughs> Tema is the verlan of maté. Maté already means to look. In a very intense way though. Tema just means look. That's it. Okay, one that I don't use myself, but I was convinced to add it to that list is chamé. Chamé, méchant. But we don't use it as mean, what méchant means originally. It means something is great, amazing. Ah, c'est charmé! Again, sounds weird to me, but apparently other people use it, so here it is for you. One that makes me laugh, uh, it is chum. So I, first, I like it. I, I like the word, so I wanted to communicate to you. But also, it is to show you that Verlan evolved. Chum is le verlan de moche. Moche being ugly. But here, see, it's not chum. It's chum. We, we kind of made the word evolve. And last one, relou. It is le verlan de lourd. And lourd in itself means heavy. So here, when we talk about relou, it's either a very bothering situation or somebody who is bothering you. Ah, il est relou! Il a essayé de me pécho. I'm pretty sure you get what that means. Je te jure, il est trop chelou. Il a essayé de me pécho l'autre jour, mais genre relou. Si merde, j'attire vraiment que les chums. In this part, and it is the last part actually, we're gonna talk about new words or new expression, idioms, that emerged recently. So I've never used them myself as a teen. There are a few I use now, but not growing up. Let's start with le sang. This one I heard from my little sister or my nephews and nieces, le sang. I heard it more in the south though, but I don't know if that reached Paris yet. Le sang is like people close to you, they're your family, they're your blood. Ma pote, c'est le sang. Ooh, pote. That's actually another slang word. Pote means friend. Okay, a few words that come from English, that would be chile, spoilé, cringe, trigger. As you see, we take the English word, but we apply the French pronunciation, except for trigger. We will just say trigger and not triggeré ou trigué. No. Chile, French pronunciation. Spoilé, almost French pronunciation. For those who follow my video about pronunciation, you know that OI makes wa. So spoilé, not exactly French pronunciation. We're kind of in between. The trigger, that's different. Not gonna translate, it is exactly as it is in English. One that I use in a different context earlier in that video is claqué. So we use it as je suis claqué, I'm tired. Now we're gonna say c'est claqué or c'est claqué au sol. Means it's terrible. It is so bad. We can also say c'est nul. Ce film, il est claqué au sol. Which leads to y'a R. R is here for rien. Donc il n'y a rien. There is nothing. C'est claqué, y'a R. Okay, not gonna lie, I could not make one or two sentences with all these words for the life of me. But it makes sense, right? They're not supposed to go all together. You now have all the keys in your hands to understand spoken French. Well, not everything, but at least you get a grasp. Though, please note that all the examples I gave you are highly exaggerated. 
we won't use all slang words in one sentence only. It just, you know, sporadically here and there. You sprinkle slang in your sentences. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and tell me in the comments. And remember that it will take a bit of time before you're fully at ease and you understand spoken French perfectly. It takes a bit of practice. I'd say listen to French on a regular basis. That can be through podcasts, music even, um, radio or movies. And if you don't know which movie you should watch, I made this video just for you that is absolutely beginner friendly. So that will give you recommendations for movies to watch in French. And I would suggest that in these movies, can be also in series, you try to spot these words or the structure that we talked about in today's video. So that's it for today. À la semaine prochaine. Salut.